Welcome back to the channel everybody. So as promised we're doing the 990 service. Um, I had this pipe made up. I'll tell you where we're going to use this pipe. It's going to ease oil draining in the future or every second service prior to fitting a filter. It's going to make life much easier. Um, in a nutshell, what we'll be doing is we'll do the oil replacement. Um, according to specs it's 3 liters but 3.2 with oil filter uh, plug replacements um, I want to touch on the plug replacements but we'll first th go through the list uh, screen replacement large oil filter replacement cartridge screen replacement small uh, quick drain hose fitment bash plate modification oil seal inspection state aside uh, air filter is not needed to be replaced it has been replaced so I'm thinking of three videos we'll see how it goes um, I'm going to be working slowly, uh, but thoroughly, so that everybody can see what it entails and how do we strip it and we reassemble it. Uh, another note, um, I went on to reserve this afternoon and I think I ran about 10 k's on reserve. So tanks have basically zero fuel in, which makes them much lighter. Tools required. Um, You'll need a good set of screwdrivers, your torque set. If you have access um, to a Dremel tool, it helps. Um, uh, a good torch it helps when you're looking into the little nooks and crannies. Um, on the plug side, I want to touch on the plugs. This is very important, and you should take note of it. Your your 990s and you have to have a look at the year model I can't be 100% certain but the earlier 990s had a shorter reach plug and your later 990s I think from 08 upwards 09, 10, 11, 12 had a longer reach plug and we've picked this up when we purchased the Iridium plugs So this is a, can you see there, or is it too close? This is a NGK LKAR9BT, uh, I9, LKAR9BI9, and you'll see the reach is very long. On your other 990 models, 308, it had actually a shorter reach plug. So when you take out your plugs, just make sure or ask the person supplying you the plug that you get the correct model, year model on plug. If you don't look and attend to this, you'll take out your plugs, put in a new plug. If you have a short reach, you put in a long reach, it'll make contact and it will screw up your pistons. So this is a very important note, plugs. Get the right length. Um, on the oil, we bought the Silkaline. So what I'm going to do on the first video, I'll see how far we get. Um, I'll be taking off the seat, taking off the pass, taking off the panels, tanks on this side, tanks on this side, um, crash bars, and we'll carry on. So let me start with the work, and um, I'll show you as much as I can. If there are details that I need to show you, the cameraman will come in and zoom in on the, the bolt. Uh, another important note when changing plugs on your front you have to loosen up your radiator so that your radiator can tilt a bit forward to get to gain access um, into that area but I'll show you the, the plugs and tools that we need on that uh, specific plug spanner 14 mil with a swivel head but I think let's let's carry on um, let's keep tracking You won't be able to follow me around the bike with every bolt that I loosen up. Um, but you'll get the general idea. So we'll do the crash bars first.
be sure to take your time, work thoroughly. Um, this will avoid you picking up any problems. And messing things up. can do this job over a weekend um, depends on you on yourself I think you should set yourself goal points uh, of jobs that you want to finish split it up maybe today you do uh, stripping of the panels um, when you have them stripped actually what I like to do is work through the wiring harness have a look at um, plugs, uh, connectors, is everything still fine? Because it's a lot of work taking everything off. So while you have it off, work through it and make sure that everything is still in good order and functioning properly. Okay, so we'll have that bolt and the bolt at the top. But before, before we get to the top bolt, there's quite a lot to strip first, especially on that cover up top. I'm not going to be losing this one completely. As I said, the air box. The airbox I'm not going to be doing any work. I'll show you how to open the airbox and uh, change your air filter. This one is a new unit. I'm not going to be replacing that tonight. Hmm? Another thing, um, I take with me charge cables and a 4.8 amp charger. Fast charging helps. Um, there's a little bit of high, again.
get a small sachet to put your bolts in, small loose bolts. You have to get the top cover off to gain access to the bolts underneath for the tank. Take the fuse housing off inside um, so in total you will have two three four five six seven eight nine ten bolts on this cover um, Get a tool with a mag magnetic point, um, it's easier getting the parts out. And don't try and not let them fall in. Uh, most of the times, the only place you'll see that bolt again is on the account. Alright, so the cameraman can just quickly make a turn here. So we'll be taking off this bolt, the tank on the side has been held by three bolts, one, two, and three at the bottom, and I've already loosened these, so it will come with, 
but you will have a flicker on this side that you need to, it's a quick connector, you need to un unconnect with the, uh, to get it off the flicker. And then on this side, we have a balancing pipe that needs to come off. And your fuel pump is located on that side. So on this side, we'll have a quick connector here that will loosen up, uh, not too much work on this side. Same three bolts. So you'll see me work on that side, but the mirror image of bolts will be on this side. Now I know I have one bolt at the bottom that just doesn't want to come off, um, but I'll have a look at that later. So I'm going to be removing the whole cover with everything. Oh, I still have to have to take the uh, rail off on this side. So I think let me work on that side um, and then I'll carry on so you can stand at the back again. As I said, take time, work cautiously, and uh, definitely get yourself a nice bright little light, it makes the world of difference. But, yeah. So we're actually getting a bit closer to where we want to be. Uh, look what I lock on now, see? Off the Okay. Zoom is on. Um, when removing this side of the tank, take care, put a rag on your foot pick because you will be placing the side corner of the tank here and leverage it so that you can actually gain access to the back and remove the internals. Okay, um, maybe the cameraman can come around here before removing the tank, this is actually we should have done it in the beginning, is take your fuel tap and close it all the way. You have one on the other side, but we'll get to that one. So your tank actually hangs on this bolt. Oh, your tank hangs on this bolt on the side, so you have, you have to lift your tank and take it off. Okay. And then from here, it's quick connectors. So let me try and get everything off here. Off. 
Set um, work slowly. Take care not to break anything. Okay, we're gonna have a bit of a problem there. Um, let me just get a bolt quickly and I will block that off. Oh, you've made it thank me too fast. Huh? I'm just putting a draw bit here in. That's all I have access to right now. And here you have a quick connector. Uh, press it down on this lever, press it down and it will release. Okay. Same at the bottom. But here you can already see um, your connectors a bit full of dust so we'll definitely have a look and clean those but this is why I say when when you strip it down you can actually have a look at the state of your engine all right well that's the one side done So if you can have a look here, um, the pipe, this is your oil tank. So the pipe that we're going to be, okay, the pipe that we're going to be fitting will come in here and it will simply run down and be stationary inside the bash plate. Um, when I want to do an oil change, on the second time around without replacing the small filter I can simply drain the oil here and drain the oil at the bottom I don't need to take all the tanks off and mess with that um, but I think in any way when we strip it down tonight uh, I'm going to give it a, a quick wash tomorrow morning just want to have a look at some things it's very dirty uh, prior to us carrying on on the second video um, but yeah, all right, let's carry on with that one. So I'm quickly going to drop the bash plate and then I'll remove the other side. Bash plate, you need a number 10 socket. All the tools are basic tools that you have in your workshop. Um, good set of screwdrivers. And then you don't need any fancy stuff. If you, as I said, if you have access to a Dremel tool, it's nice. Um, but all basic tools. Before I'm going to drain the oil, I'm first going to, going to uh, remove the front plate because I will need to cut a groove in 
to actually get this bolt out um, and fit the pipe. I'm not sure why they don't have it available in South Africa. I've seen it in the States. CJ Designs, I think, has them. It makes life just so much easier. I'm not sure why they don't do it. Um, around the fabrication of the pipe and the fittings, I'll list all the dimensions um, where we built it. I think they work out about 300 Rand a pipe with all the fittings. It's got a nice secure with O-ring seal at the bottom. You can lock it and you can forget about it for 8,000 kilometers. Good crimping. Steady pipe. Um, pipes we can make different designs as well. Bra braided hoses can be done so it's not a problem all right so let me carry on quickly i am going to strip the other side right welcome back everybody um, i paused the video and I removed the other side of the tank and I started um, cutting with the Dremel to the plate and I want to show you I've drained the tank the original bolt is this bolt that came at the at the bottom so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the pipe off quickly uh, put some Loctite on the thread there will be some oil spilling, but not a lot. Um, I was asking myself the question, if, if I were a guy that's been servicing this bike on the premises, it would be easier just to dump the oil at the bottom and actually never remove all the tanks and, and do a proper thorough job. Um, there's quite a bit of oil in here that came out of the holding tank only. So how many times do people actually take the time and do it properly? It just makes you wonder. So we have Loctite on, this is tightened up, um, I'll definitely be tightening this pipe now. This is industrial grade piping, can hold pressure and it has no problem with oil. So now I'm just going to lock them. Don't over tighten them. And then I'll be rooting this pipe through the back.
So to recap, put on this high pressure pipe. I'll just tuck it in here at the bottom somewhere. I'll lock this up when I want to do future oil changes. Um, obviously now I still need to loosen the, the bottom. Um, I need to replace the filter, the small filter on the bottom. I will do the oil filter on that side and I will do the screen on the other side. Um, I think I'll pause the video a bit and then I'll carry on and just get my hands cleaned up quickly and uh, quickly regroup and then we'll carry on. All right, um, the video is about half an hour long. Uh, with the ADSL that we have, it's going to take about a gazillion years to upload it. So I'm, I'm, I'm stopping it on this video now and uh, Tomorrow morning I'll carry on, uh, I'll upload this video tonight, but let's quickly recap what we did. So the oil replacement, obviously we're not there yet. Plug replacement, that'll do tomorrow morning. Screen replacement, same thing. Oil filter replacement, cartridge, same. Uh, screen replacement, small, same. The quick drain hose fitment, that is completed, and I'll show you now what I did on that one. The bash plate modification has been completed, done. Uh, air filter needs no replacement, so we're left with one, two, three, four, five, six, six small points. Uh, quick drain hose I wanted to do in the second video, I did that, modified that. Flux will be tomorrow. Uh, panel removal is done. Visual inspection, I'm going to do that. Okay, one of that. So what I'll do tomorrow morning is nothing is open. I'll quickly pull it out and do a proper wash and have a look at, uh, at the visuals, plugs, connections, clean up, um, and then we'll do the video on the replacement of the cartridges. But I hate working on a dirty motor, so we'll just clean it up first. Let me show you quickly on this hose. Um, above the bash plate, I have actually done what a lot of people won't do, but it's my choice. It's, it's what I want to do is I've removed a corner piece here, and this slides up. It has makes space available for the pipe that I fitted. The original bolt won't be going in again um, it is a magnetic tip bolt I would, I would like to retain that but I'll see at the bottom to, uh, to get the retain bolt on to have the magnetization still available but for now the pipe has been fitted that will tuck in underneath the bash plate properly um, it locks properly at the bottom you can forget about it for the next uh, 8,000 kilometers. So what I'll be doing is every 8,000 kilometers I will do the normal service. Uh, what I won't do is every second service I'll only remove the tanks and uh, replace the small filter. I'll show you what that one looks like. It's this small filter here. So we'll see what this one looks like tomorrow morning when I remove it. The big cartridge filter goes on the side, screen goes on the other side, um, and the plugs we'll do tomorrow morning as well. There's actually quite a lot of work on the front plug to get that done. We'll have to loosen the radiator, move it forward. Um, I want to have a visual inspection of the oil tank. Now, the 990R has, and the 990S and Adventure have a dry sump system. I've seen this afternoon um, the 1190 
has actually a, a wet sump system so it hasn't got the the oil tank because the one guy asked me about the pipe for his bike and he won't be able to do it he's got a big oil filler on this side and it actually feeds straight into the sump so 990 has got a dry sump system 1190 has a wet sump system interesting um, we'll do a proper cleanup we'll do the plugs tomorrow morning and I want to concentrate as I said on the wiring have a look at everything all right and prior washing it tomorrow morning with a wrap obviously please remember to close up all your open pipes so you don't get water in do a cleanup we'll move the radiator and then we'll actually start installing all the parts all the goodies okay so I hope this uh, helps you to see what you need to strip to get to it, it it's nothing much um, it, take your time work through it um, if you have questions please ask and uh, just be thorough take time and work through it split it up in jobs uh, work through a list it's the easiest way then you don't forget things don't hurry anything um, when you start closing up make sure even if you work on a cylinder on the one side finish it up then work tomorrow on the other side but do a proper job and close it up and be done with it all right so for tonight that will be it uh, thank you very much for supporting the channel like and subscribe um, I like making these videos for you guys it gives me pleasure um, there's no money in it for me but it, it, it's a it's a knowledge sharing and I hope you can take something away from it and as time progresses we'll do different models we'll do different jobs um, yeah we'll, we'll carry on as whatever we get in um, at some stage I'll get some people in to bring the bikes and we'll do services and explain and get uh, teach people how to do these things offline but we'll see you guys tomorrow morning I'm going to try and upload this 300 gazillion gigabyte file and with ADSL, I think it's going to take a while, but we'll do it. Have a nice one. Thanks for out.